Now, what attracted you to the Grand Company? Because, because uh, watching you and seeing all that I think that you can do physically, mm -hmm. you could have gone pretty much anywhere. I think you could have uh, assembled into a ballet company, you've gone into another style of modern mm -hmm. dance, but what attracted you to Grand? Um, well, I love all types of dance. You know, we, we trained at everything, in everything at New World. But um, Peter London was my um, gram teacher in Miami, and um, he showed us a gram video. <laughs> I think it was like the first week of school or something, freshman year, and he showed us Aaron into the maze, among other video, um, among other ballets. But I saw that and I was like, "Whoa, that's crazy!" <laughs> and I loved it. I loved it. I thought it was just like. I had never seen anything like that before, and it really spoke to me, and just getting into the classwork and the technique, and it just was so real to me. It just really like spoke to my heart, and my body, is, it feels very organic to me. So that really pulled me in, and then I went to summer intensives and winter intensives, and learned a lot more, and the Graham Company came down to Miami a few times, so got that chance to see them in live in action. They performed at our school, so wow, that was, yeah, that must have been really yeah. Cool. It was it was great. It was great. And then senior year, I auditioned and I got in. So <laughs> that's wonderful. So you left right out of school and went yeah. to work. That's, yeah. that's how it should be. Yeah, I mean, you were very focused on it. I tried. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> and, and you still do try. It's clear. Yeah. It's clear. I try. It's, it's a great place to be. Um, now, you're, you're doing a battle guard. Yes. Yes. And you play the snake in yes. the battle guard, which is a great one. I love it. <laughs> but even that whole concept, I mean, there, there's a certain amount of, of um, gender bending in that, mm -hmm. and there's a certain amount of, of uh, of yin and yang and give yeah. and take and the two women uh, have a, a confrontation and an yeah. encounter and the men have an encounter mm -hmm. and the whole bit so she was really talking about a, a whole lot of things yeah it's a lot going on in that ballet and we call it we call it the soap opera well, it is, it is. <laughs> well, but what i love is um also how the simplicity of the gucci's garden yeah the trees with the the, the vertical uh uh, leave, oh, literally leaves and branches, mm -hmm. and the garden has a horizontal uh, foliage, and and the way he sets it up is, is so sparse yeah. that, that it, it does not block any of the action. Yeah. And then you can disappear and yeah. into the pools, literally in between, and then reappear. No, it's really an awesome piece because you get you get everything. You get art. You, the dancing is art, and then you get the Gucci pieces, and that's art, and the dance and people are flying through the space <laughs> and going in and out of the sets and it's very much um, give you everything. It's never a dull moment. Yeah, <laughs> it's never a dull moment and there's always an interaction and even if you're not dancing, you're still in your character on stage and you're focused on something and you're still there. Even if you're back to the audience, they can still feel you. Well, she yeah. came from that era that the back spoke. Yeah. And, uh, that even is a power, the power of stillness, the true, the true genius and the power of stillness. Yeah. And uh, it's really evident in what she does. Yeah. It's great. I, I love that ballet. <laughs> well, I, well, it's great. It's great. It's great. And, and so in this next season, I know you're back now mm -hmm. and working again. So, yes. so what are you looking forward to in the upcoming season? Um, definitely in Battle Garden. Um, that was something that I missed very much because I, towards the, before my injury, I was performing it a lot and it became one of my favorite pieces. So I'm looking forward to performing that. Um, going back into Appalachian Spring. Who are you in Appalachian Spring? The Preacher. Oh, how much fun. Yeah. Oh <laughs> it's, it's challenging though. It's very challenging. Um, I've learned a lot from Janet, especially and Denise Vale, our rehearsal director. but. I remember a couple of years ago, Janet spoke to me and she said, you know, you have to, you should talk to yourself while you're dancing. and Only while you're dancing, though. Yeah, only, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not on a regular basis, but to understand the character more and to understand the environment that you're in at that time and 
should going through the movements and through the space on stage, you know, talk yourself through it. And that's, it's very helpful, but it still is very challenging because I want to be as real as I can with the characters. Well, you so, know, but that role, not to cut you off, but, no, so, but that role, to me, um, all of dance is a language. Yeah. All is, it's communication. But he really communicates in a different way because yeah. he's got his four girls, his following, yeah. and then he's also uh, kind of uh, ministering to the, the new couple, like, yes. putting them all into a state, and then he ba he closes the ballet out, really, yeah. and he sets it up for them. Yeah. No, he, he he's definitely one of the main fixtures in the ballet, but, um, you know, it's, I feel like it's very easy sometimes just for people to put on this kind of facade. facade or acting, and I don't that's really never been my style, and that's why I think I'm so attractive, attracted to the grand work, because the movements alone feed you something. You don't have to put on a no, facade it's, it's at there. all. It's yeah. There. So um, yeah, it's just talking my way through that character and how would I feel as a preacher with all these people following me and these this new couple in front of me that's somewhat naive and I'm trying to teach them and so it's a lot there to work with it's a great ballet and then again it's Noguchi the simplicity yeah. of the set yeah it's, it's beautiful it's beautiful. wonderful music yeah but I hear there's a point in the Copeland score when it just gives me goosebumps yeah and it kind of gets quiet and yeah the <laughs> <laughs> there's definitely moments there where I'm standing on the rock and I'll hear the same part of the music each time and I get I feel like I'm about to tear up because <laughs> it's this, it's the spirit of just performing that work and you you know, at least I know that I'm performing art, like a masterpiece, you know, so. He's a young dancer, and it's uh, he takes his time coming to the specificity of each character. But once he gets there, I mean, if you see his serpent in Embattled Garden and his preacher in Appalachian Spring, and now I hope his acrobat in Every Soul is a Circus, he really has very distinct and different characters for each one. Well, he's. And, you know, he's really developing into a wonderful artist because he's, he's sensitive and he's intelligent about approaching the roles that he's doing and um, he's just got great charisma on stage, besides a wonderful technique. So as part of our inner landscape season in March, we are bringing back a ballet that hasn't been seen in over 25 years called Every Soul is a Circus. It was the first first work that Graham choreographed where she began to talk about the inner landscape and she as the empress of the arena in this circus created a circus world that represented her own psyche. 
And starring in it with her were Eric Hawkins and Merce Cunningham. We have a fabulous black and white film of the three of them, plus the chorus. Uh, in our season, uh, Lloyd Knight is playing the Merce Cunningham role and uh, brings to it the certain spring. Merce had an incredible jump, and, and Lloyd certainly has that too. And uh, a wry sense of humor that maybe not everybody knows about, but we're looking forward to showing I see things. what you were able to do, and you have such a wonderful spirit about what you do. You're such a good person. So I'm, I'm wondering, what, what does the future hold for you? If you could describe what you want to go with. Um, I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> I mean, I would like to do as much as I possibly can. Um, I feel, I feel like that's, that's what kind of makes a great, well-rounded dancer as well. It's just to be able to go into many different routes. So, um, I want to continue, it's just the, you know, right now I am in Graham, and I want to approach that with the, every inch, you know, of goodness that I can, and, um, just see what, see what the future holds, um, up for anything, um, but right now I'm definitely concentrated on just getting Graham's work out there, and approaching it and giving it the best I can.